So can I drop the mic? Do you yeah. Think? yeah. <laughs> just so people can see me. I'm just thinking. That, okay, but now I can't do that. So now I'm just interesting this. Hold on, just just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> That's not going to work now, is it? Because I've moved the mic too far away. Like that. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay! Okay. Excellent. <laughs> colleagues. Thank you so much for being here. This, I have to say, I think this is definitely a larger turnout for provincial council than, oh, I don't know, ever. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful to be here with all of you uh, here today. It's very exciting. You know, like, I'd like you to just, just look around you. You know, this is our NDP political family. This is the Alberta <laughs> This is the party and the movement who are governing the province of Alberta. <laughs> and this is the party and the team that won the spring 2015 election. <laughs> This is the party and the team that are demonstrating that winning that election was worth it. Yeah. And that's because we are bringing change to Alberta, my friends. And let me say, it's been an amazing, well, year, but seven months, really. It's, it's kind of crazy when you think how little time has actually passed. But I want you to know how incredibly proud that I am to be the leader of the new Democratic Party of Alberta and how deeply proud I am to be working with each and every one of you, and how deeply grateful I am to each and every one of you for your commitment to our cause. I want to say thank you so much. that you did in the last year to make our government possible, and I want to thank you for all the work that I'm about to be asking you to do in the year to come. <laughs> but I'll have a little bit more to say about that in a moment, but first, let's just talk a little bit about what we've accomplished so far. Friends, we're working together at long last to reverse many years of bad decisions by conservative governments in this province. And we are working... Alberta to its core values and priorities, we are a province that is committed to building jobs and prosperity that are much more widely and fairly shared. We are a province that builds and cherishes universal public education and health care. And we are a province that doesn't just care about the environment, but we act on it. issues and then I'll say a few words about some of the lessons that we've learned this fall and then I'll conclude by talking about the work that lies before all of us. Now friends, too many Albertan families today are worried about their jobs and their economic security due to yet another steep fall in commodity prices. And we've seen this before in Alberta and we'll see it again but that doesn't make it any easier for anybody who's experiencing the consequences of those changes. Those families, though, who are worried, they also know that the opposition parties sitting in the legislature have nothing to offer to them. Those opposition parties believe that by firing nurses and teachers, the price of oil will go back up. <laughs> <laughs> they believe that the answer to hard economic times is to create even harder economic times, and they believe that the answer to the bad choices made by the former Conservative government is to make even more of those bad choices. Because by making the same mistakes and making the same bad choices over and over and over again, somehow we'll get different results. 
Now, I've just spent weeks in the legislature listening to those opposition policy, uh, politicians demanding that we go backwards. Backwards to unfair taxes and premiums, backwards to cutting and slashing our healthcare system and our schools, backwards to ignoring climate change. Well, we're not going to do that. <laughs> that committed to introduce a budget that protects our health care system and our schools. They elected a government that committed to a balanced budget plan that is careful, reasonable, and measured, that doesn't just cause damage that we spend decades repairing afterwards. They elected a government that committed to an economic development plan, a plan that would invest in the infrastructure of our province, that would make capital available to job creators to diversify our economy, that would promote jobs and small business, and that would work, as I said before, to make sure that prosperity as it grows is widely and fairly shared. We made those commitments, and then we did something that seemed, apparently, to really, really surprise our friends in the opposition. <laughs> we kept our promises. <laughs> that set out a responsible balanced budget plan and that invests in jobs and diversification. Every family in Alberta will or has already benefited. Every person who needs health care will and has already benefited. Every child who went to school will or has already benefited. And you know what? I think that our democracy has benefited too from this radical, this new, this NDP idea that we have that you keep the commitments you made to the people who elected you. facing our province and quite frankly facing the world and that is the issue of climate change. Now Alberta is an energy producing province. We are a province uh, on which many many jobs rely and are connected to our energy sector and our economy will continue to have that important relationship for many many years to come. So we face some important challenges in dealing with the issue of climate change. But our predecessors in office, quite frankly, did not handle that issue very well at all. And as a result, our province was becoming increasingly vilified in our main energy markets, the people that we need to sell to in order to prosper as energy producers. And our pre predecessors were held up all around the world as a principal example of a government that was not meeting its environmental responsibilities. And so when we got elected, quite frankly, it was time to act and everybody knew it, including many progressive-minded leaders in our energy industry. People who are in the best position to see the price our province was paying because of the refusal of our predecessors to act. So we took on this issue, as we said we would in the election, and we took it on the Alberta way. We worked together. We worked to resolve our differences and find common ground. And a few weeks ago, I stood together with leaders from the energy industry and from civil society and from indigenous communities and from environmental groups, and we put Alberta where it belongs. We are leaders again. <laughs> change leadership plan, we are going to phase out coal. We are going to bring in a carbon price and put those revenues towards working on greening on our, our economy, on, on supporting energy efficiency, on investing in green technology and, and green job creators, and in 
and on the task of helping individual Albertas make the choices that will ensure that collectively we reduce our emissions as responsible citizens in this province and as responsible citizens of this world. And we're going to do that as well by managing our emissions in the Alberta oil sands so that we can create jobs and develop our resources responsibly and sustainably and that's why we put a cap on emissions. So friends, it is finally time for people who care about the environment to stop vilifying Alberta because this province is now a climate change leader. Like uh, Bill 5, acting on our pre-election commitment, we improved the transparency and accountability of public salaries and compensation in the public sector. And Bill 7, one of my favorite bills, which stipulates and therefore strengthens the right of transgendered people in and under our human rights code in Alberta. women who are victims of violence and new rights and tools to manage their lives when they are victims of assault. That bill was introduced by independent Calgary MLA Deborah Drever. <laughs> that bill was passed unanimously in the House. my favorite bill. <laughs> but you know, it really is. And then there was Bill 6. Now, to make that very, very clear. Now, you know, as I've said before, I'm, I'm sorry, as Premier, I have to take responsibility for this, that we didn't do a better job making the limits of this bear, bill very clear at the outset. But let me tell you what I am very, very proud of. <laughs> I'd be fine if it weren't for that last round of applause, I gotta tell you guys. Uh, but here's what I am very proud of. I am proud that we in Alberta finally are implementing basic safety rights for paid farm workers in Alberta. Damn the last property in Canada. <laughs> to be safe at work in every workplace and that my friends is a principle 
the NDP has fought for under every leader and in every election that we have ever run in. So those basic rights are going to take effect on January 1st, 2016. And this is the kind of government that we are going to try very hard to be. We'll admit when we made mistakes and we'll correct them, as we did in this case. And we will also do what's right, like protecting the rights of every worker injured on the job, because that, my friends, is the right thing to do. So you know, there is a good deal more work for our government to do, and a good deal more work for each and every one of you to do. Early in the new year, we'll be acting on another election promise. We'll be introducing the modernization of our promises, province's energy royalty rates. And we'll be working hard to implement the economic development plan you've heard about earlier today. And to work very hard to execute successfully Alberta's climate change leadership plan. And we will be working with our fellow provinces and with the new federal government in Ottawa on some critically important national issues like a national framework on climate change, and a new national health accord, which will hopefully strengthen and reinforce universally accessible public Medicare across Canada, and especially here in Alberta. And later in the spring, not too much later, we will return to the House to introduce a new throne speech and a new budget that will continue that work. So we've all earned a little bit of rest for this holiday season, I think. But starting as soon as you can stand it in the new year, <laughs> January 1st, <laughs> I need each and every one of you to continue your work too. We need to keep building this party. We're not quite sure what we'll be facing in the next election. In the past five days, we've seen uh, the leader of the official opposition proclaiming his love for the Progressive Conservative Party, while also calling on the police to investigate them, so you know, we'll see how that works. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> so there's, there's, there's some stuff to work out too, you know. So. But we know what we have to be. We must be the strong, open, and engaged party that all progressive-minded Albertans can support and count on. In the face of opponents who will bring nothing to any debate but snarling anger and bad choices and wrong priorities, we must be the alternative. And so I need your help to keep building this big progressive tent that is our party. A party in which all progressive-minded Albertans can join together to work towards prosperity, to work towards diversification, to work for good, stable public services, and to work for responsible leadership on the environment. We need to build our party in every riding in this province. And we need to build our fundraising capacity and our campaigning capacity in every riding in this province. We need to recruit, recruit, and then when you think you've lost all your friends, try to recruit them, you need to recruit some more people and some new friends. We need to be reaching out to women and to men who share our values and our vision for the future of this province. So please help make that happen in your riding and in your community. Please get engaged in our party and give us your best ideas, as we've been doing together on our panels today, this morning. Work with fire and with heart, because we are making a difference. Alberta is leading again, and you are making it happen. So thank you all very, very much, and I look so forward to